Impractical Jokers, Girls Juicing, Aggressive Fans, New Tour Dates, and Bumpy Tits. An all-new About Last Night podcast starts now. Hey, it's Herbert. Mm-hmm. And you're listening to the About Last Night podcast, you slippery little son of a bitch. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Adam Ray here. Subscribe right here if you have not seen the show or been here before. Boom! Right there. Subscribe. New episodes dropping every Tuesday now. It was Monday, now it's Tuesday. Get with it, get on it. Welcome to it. Got my new black tea here. I'm starting to shift from coffee to black tea. We'll see how that goes. Um, Everyone's got a vice. Mine is coffee, weed, comedy, and love. But I need to start weaning off coffee. Pot will not happen. Slowly but surely. Booze, yeah, I think I'm pretty responsible with it. Although I am in the middle of a sabbatical currently. And I'll get to that in a minute. But uh, I was told, not to name drop by my friend Sandra Bullock, that uh, I needed to make a change from coffee to tea ASAP. Because it was, as she said, eating up my body. So um, <laughs> so I am trying black tea. Mm. Throwing, a little, uh, throwing a little peach magic here. One second. Jackie boy, I'm uh, doing a podcast. What's up? Hey, buddy. Do you have a minute? Um, I'm in the middle of a pod. How how urgent is it? It's not crazy urgent. You want to just give us a ring once you're up? Can I do that? Give me like 45. Cool? Perfect. All right. You're on the pod. You want to say anything? Hey, Jack, you want to say anything to your fans? You're on the pod right now. It's good to see everyone. Oh, God. We're going to edit this out. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> Take care, buddy. Bye, bud. So my manager, Jack Fink. If you don't know who he is, he's a legend and a rock star. And possibly one of the sexiest mustaches in the game of comedy. Um, So look, black tea, we'll see how it goes. Everyone has a vice. I was in New York last week uh, shooting uh, some episodes of the Impractical Jokers. And wow. I'm going to get back to that. But I went to see my buddy Johnny Resnick play a private show. Lead singer of the Goo Goo Dolls. My buddy Steve, his manager, hits me up. Hey, are you in town randomly? Yes, I am. Wow. Come over, playing a private show for USA Today, the newspaper. And uh, this all building up to tell you, my buddy uh, Steve was like, yeah, man, I'm off booze. Eight months. I go, fuck yeah, dude. He's like, but, you know, edibles. And I was like, yeah. And good on you because it's tough to just go completely sober through life. And if you do... You have vices. Everyone has a vice in some fashion, right? If it's not a substance of some sort that's getting you buzzed up, it's something weird, you know? Like bestiality or yo-yos. Those are two extreme examples, but we all got something, and whether we share that we (laughs) indulge in that or not, we're all working with something. So another reason to not uh, judge a book by its cover, unless that book is titled there are too many jews how do we get rid dot 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 go hitler if that's the title of the book hey man judge the title and the author but man what a 10 days i had i just got back yesterday and um yeah man good to be home i love la i missed la here's where i spent the last 11 days wednesday march 13th i get on a plane i fly to atlanta i meet up with bert kreischer we fly to buffalo we get off in Buffalo. We aboard his tour bus. We, which by the way, I took a little video of Bert on the plane when he got on. We were both in first, and he sits down, and I go, "Hey, Bert Kreischer, you're a big fan, man." And uh, and he turns around and goes, "Oh, thanks, man." And then sees it's me, and he goes, "Oh, you piece of shit, machine, big fan, big oh. fan, man, yeah, super That's fan." Son, you <laughs> Just got heckled on my flight. <laughs> And I put that on TikTok. It's like five seconds. It got 4.5 million views in like a day. The internet is wild. Because people will put up very funny clips. 
And not that that wasn't a funny moment, but I'm like, wow, am I doing it all wrong? Do people just want real quick hitters like that? I think they do. It's like it's why Vine took off with six second videos. We might be heading back in that direction. Although TikTok is trying to do a thing where it's they want you now to post more than a minute to get shuffled into the uh, algorithm. So who the, who the fuck knows? Nobody knows, by the way. <laughs> people, there are so many people in so many social media teams, and I get hit up by by you know just brand people and just I want to help grow your numbers. Nobody fucking knows, dude. Everyone has data, and then what they think that data means. And what, and then they go off their own experiences or their own social media page or the pages they've seen grow and how they grow. But it's like there's so many variables, you know. Hey, you gotta be like, you gotta be like what you know John Stamos is doing to grow his Instagram. Oh, really? Well, maybe he's John Stamos, so anything he posts or does is gonna get a certain amount of views and hits. Yeah, but he posts at 3 p.m. every Wednesday. Oh, okay. So that so do what John Stamos does on Wednesdays. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Okay. There's no wrong way to eat a Reese's. And there's not just one way to eat a Reese's. I've said that many times. I think I said that as Dr. Phil to Anthony Jeselnik. <laughs> Which, by the way, thanks for watching that episode. I think it's approaching 500K uh, views on YouTube. The Anthony Jeselnik, uh, Tiffany Haddish, Dr. Phil Live. We have a new one coming up next week, which is going to be Banana City, dude. Steph Tolev, Pete Holmes, and Jelly Roll. Get the fuck out of here. I met Jelly Roll at the uh, Austin New Year's Kill Tony show. Couldn't have been nicer. I pulled up in a giant Sprinter van, and everybody was outside about 10 minutes before showtime on night one. And I'm in full Dr. Phil uh, get up, and I just get out in character, and I go, what's up, motherfuckers? I go, let's get this party started. Tony Hinchcliffe in the house. And I go, Jelly Roll, what's up, baby? And I just, I go, chest bump, and he gives me a chest bump. And then he was just so nice, and he was like, man, I'm a fan, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, obviously, you don't need me to tell you that I am of you, but uh, super cool, super sweet, and uh, exchanged info, and, and here we are, so I cannot wait. That show is sold out. We might be releasing a few tickets. If you can't make it to that one, come to the May 6th Netflix show. Oh, wait, that's sold out too in a day. Burke Kreischer, Mark Norman, and some special guests that are going to be banana. I can't even, I just want that show to get here because it's going to kind of be insane. We are going to add a show June 26th at the Comedy Store. It's a Wednesday at 8. Tickets should be up today, actually, on the Comedy Store website. So go over to thecomedystore.com, June 26th, another Dr. Phil Live show. There's already one in June on June 4th. We're adding a second show to the to the store's uh, calendar because uh, why not? A lot of people, thankfully, want to come fuck around with it. So uh, I want to try to get those in before uh, before people don't. <laughs> so um, traveling with Burke Kreischer on a tour bus is wild. It's an awesome bus. He owns the bus. He bought the bus. We immediately get on and he starts telling stories about doing Shaq's podcast. So that's just an awesome sit down. I'm hitting the pen. I'm having a cocktail. Just having a great time. We kick it. We party for about four or five hours. Get some sleep. Tough to sleep on a bus. The tour bus sleep is not ideal. I mean, you're bouncing around in this, you know, <laughs> panini coffin. And it's just, you're you're just squished down like that. And, and you're awake for most of the time because you're just anticipating the bus just flipping over into a ditch and uh, and tossing you around like a fucking cop salad. So, tough to sleep, but worth the experience. The arena shows are great. 10 to 15 thou uh, every show. We uh, drove from Buffalo to Erie, Pennsylvania. And Erie, Pennsylvania was a great show. These people are thirsty for entertainment because they live in fucking Erie, Pennsylvania. But... I used to go out there. There was a comedy club called Junior's Last Laugh. That's so why I went out there. I think the last time I've been there, sorry, my mouth is so fucking dry. Definitely don't zoom in on my mouth. It's so, oh, can you tell how dry it is? That's what she said. So we go to Erie, Pennsylvania, and uh, we walk around one day. We go to an outdoors world, which is one of those big, like, you know, there's guns and beards and flip-flops and more guns and jerky and barbecue sauce and guns and gun-flavored barbecue sauce and, 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 and vests and fishing poles and fishing lines and, and wife beaters and, and T-shirts that look like tank tops and, you know, you know and just goatees and men behind the counter who have a problem with masturbating and domestic abusers and abusers domestically and and, and Kit Kat bars and cinnamon toast crunch and and no gays though you know it's just it's a big you know action packed 
you know, um, way up in the uh, boonies type of place. But the guns and knives they sell there are top notch. I think Bert bought a knife. Then we wandered through the mall. I did some mall TVs on my Instagram, you know, where I do the uh, fake trailers with the uh, obscure titles of, of stores in the mall. That was fun. And then, uh, and then we wandered into a Dick Sporting Goods, and Bert got us matching tracksuits. And then we walked into a guitar center, and Chappelle Lacey, who was also on tour with us, started strumming away. He plays guitar pretty well and was playing some Foo Fighters. And we all started kind of jamming along, and Bert made a little promo video. And then Bert was like, let's buy this guitar. And then he's like, let's buy an electric guitar. Because <laughs> you got that type of money where you can just fucking buy shit and not think twice. So we're all fired up about it. One of the employees is like, that's a John Mayer guitar. And Bert's like, I've been DMing with John. Let me hit him up, tell him I'm buying his guitar. I'm like, let me do you one better and FaceTime the motherfucker. I'm also friends with him. So <laughs> I call John, he picks up. They're playing his song, by the way, already in the Guitar Center. So I turn the phone over to like 12 Guitar Center employees and they all use and go, hi, John Mayer. It was really fucking adorable. And then we chatted for a bit. He gave us some advice on what guitars to buy. Bert and John fanned out over watches. I think John was in Norway playing a show. Stud. What a stud, dude. Picks up, chats with us, gives these employees a, a day to remember, a walk to remember starring uh, Mandy Moore. And um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a cool day. And then we go to the show and it's a blast. And then we drive through the night to Dayton, Ohio. Dayton, Ohio is 12 minutes from Yellow Springs, Ohio. Why does that matter? That's where Dave Chappelle lives. And that's where Dave Chappelle is opening a comedy club. And that's fucking cool. He's opening a comedy club in Yellow Springs, and we went through it, and it's incredible. Holy shit. I mean, man. Yeah, it's awesome. I can't wait to go back and hopefully perform there, at least watch a show there. But wow. Dave was cool. We chummed it up. He, we uh, talked about when he was at the store, and, and I was doing Dr. Phil during his show to him. And he's just a really sweet guy, man. And so funny. So naturally funny. Watching Burt Kreischer and Dave Spell swap stories was awesome. Could have done that for an hour. Need a show where Chappelle is mixing it up like that with comedians in his club because it was just so funny. And uh, I think they were talking about one point, Dave was like, I saw when Natasha Leggero put a top off after you with the improv. And Bro was like, yeah. And, and, and everybody was like, yeah, it was wild. And then uh, Dave was like, man, people just taking their shirts off in Hollywood. Now. I got to move back. <laughs> and uh, he's just so cool, man. And uh, and really kind, really kind. And then we went back to his... Uh, his place post show in Dayton and party till about two three a.m. Got IVs at like two thirty in the morning and uh, Dave's just hilarious, generous, kind, and the goat and and that's all there is to it. And uh, and then we drove to Atlantic City ten hours through the night, bumping around the bus trying to get some Z's. Played some NBA two K and uh, got to Atlantic City where we did two sold out shows at the uh, Atlantic City Hard Rock. Wow, amazing venue. Crowds were awesome. Probably the best of the shows we did that weekend as far as stage and sound and aesthetics of the room. You know, an arena is an arena, but this place was like, it just sounded great, dude. And, uh, and that's what you want, you know? You still want to feel somewhat of a connect with the crowd. And, uh, and it's not every arena is dialed in with the uh, volume uh, on stage and off. So uh, that was a plus to be able to hear yourself and, uh, and not have to feel like you're screaming into, uh, into Stargate. So uh, killer shows. Drove up to Salisbury, Maryland for one more. Closed it out. Had a blast. And uh, and then I took off to Philly for a night. Kicked it with some homies. Kicked it with my buddies Doug and Brian and Dimitri. Doug, of course, of the Doug Air Story, the documentary that's up on my YouTube channel. If you haven't seen it yet, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. It's uh, an amazing story that I'm super proud of, and it's only 45 minutes. If you're new to this channel and you're going to watch anything I do, sure, watch some Dr. Phil stuff. Watch my stand-up specials on YouTube. Um... Watch my new special that we are close to having a premiere date on very soon. But until that, the Doug Air story. Come on, go watch it. It's going to inspire you. It's going to tug at the heartstrings. And it's going to make you want to get up a little bit earlier in the day to attack what you got to do. So I kicked it with Doug and Brian. We went bowling. Uh, it was fucking amazing. Throw a little clip of that uh, up there. Um, and uh, we had a good time. We drank. We smoked. We told stories. Really, really fucking uh, fun. And then I drove to New York the next day and shot three days of Impractical Jokers. Wow. These guys make it look easy. I mean, I had an appreciation for what they do already, but holy shit, man. Do you know how tough it is to make people 
like just first of all they're so famous now so everyone recognizes them but there's still there's still so many people in the world so we're at this mall in the Bronx doing this game I don't want to give it away but I had to basically get people to put their bags down so Sal could hook their bag up with a giant fish hook and uh, it was tough I'm like talking way too loud I'm like hey I'm trying to take a picture you might help me out Sal's like babe Speak at a normal level. People think you're just a crazy person screaming in the middle of the mall. And also, I didn't have the phone up to my ear. So I had the earpiece in, and I'm talking to Q and Murr and Sal. And I'm just like, yeah, no. No, it's tough to get a picture down here. And Sal's like, babe, hold the phone up, babe. No one knows that you're <laughs> – they just think you're a crazy guy in the middle of the mall right now. So finally, I, I figured that out. And then I'm trying to get people to drop their bags so Sal can hook it up from, uh, from a floor above. And, man, it's tough. I got a few people to set their bags down. There was one really fun, sassy black woman, and she comes up, and she's like, uh, I go, you might, uh, sweetheart, uh, help me with the pictures? She's like, I got to go, but I can help you out real quick. I go, just, um, she's got two bags. I go, she goes, takes my phone, and I try to get her to, like, stand in front of, like, I want to get her to put a bag down and then go, can you actually step a little closer and get the this in the background? So they'll step in front of their bag, and then Sal can hook it from behind. She wouldn't put a bag down. I go, do you mind putting one of your bags down? She goes, I put my bag down. I go, you're just holding the phone with one hand. I'm more of a two-hand picture guy. There is a difference in the quality. I could I could show you examples of it, but I'm, I don't want to waste your time. She's like, I ain't putting my bag down. I don't trust your face. I was like, okay, well, that that, that being said, uh, do you, just one bag. It just, it'll be easier for me. She's like, take your own damn picture. Hands me my phone back. All the guys are laughing. I'm like, all right, fuck, this is not easy. Finally got a few people to bite, and then Sal and I swapped, and, uh, and it was cool. And then we did uh, another day. In a bagel shop, Richard Kind was there, the legendary Richard Kind from uh, from The Watcher, from Mad About You, from Curb, from Inside Out. I mean, you, Richard is one of those guys that's been in everything. Seinfeld, I mean, just a true legend and a, and a great actor, great character actor. Richard and I met on The uh, the Bellman. Uh, put a little poster up there for that. If you haven't seen that, it's a fun watch. It's on Amazon. Uh, it's the first movie I uh, uh, led, uh, starred in as the uh, the main guy. It's me, Thomas Lennon, Richard Kind, the late Willie Garson, who we uh, who we love, and uh, and Jonathan Kite, and um, and and a few other gangsters, uh, Kellen Coleman, uh, Andrew Caldwell. Super fun, super fun movie. Uh, it's about Bellman, the work at a resort in Tucson, Arizona. Check it out. Um, Shout out to the Jokers, shout out to Q, shout out to Murr, shout out to Simi and Casey and Mike and the whole crew, and of course my boy Sal for making that happen. It was a dream come true. There are certain shows that I've been on that I have been such a fan of. Curb, Jokers, you know what I'm saying? Would have loved to have been on The Office. That didn't pan out. But uh, man, it's extra special when you're just like, I'm doing an intro with them for the bit, and I'm like, I'm, I watch this part all the time. So it was very, very cool. That stuff will never not be cool. And if it does, you should quit the business because you should still be a fan of what you're doing. It's all for fun. Hopefully, everyone got into this business for the fun of it. And when that starts to kind of go away and it just becomes a gig, oh, man. Make room for somebody else. You're soaking up the, you're soaking up the fun. And you don't even want it. Um, went from New York to D.C. Um... Oh, by the way, popped over, That's like I said, to the USA Today show to see the Goo Goo Dolls uh, do a private. They just rip it, dude. Holy shit. Johnny Resnick and, and Robbie, uh, the uh, the bass player who obviously formed the band 30-plus years ago, are just dialed in, dude. I'll throw up a little video that I took from, uh, from the show. Um, actually, let's just cut to it. I mean, come on. Just, if you can keep your voice intact as a musician and you've got 30 plus radio hits, you're gonna be fine, okay? That's where uh, Aqua went wrong. They just had Barbie Girl. Fucking Chumbawamba, tub thumping. You needed a follow up, baby. Baja Men, who let the dogs out? Nobody gives a shit. Sing about it in the follow up. Tell us who let them out. So that's what I'm saying, man. You need, uh, you need, uh, you know, multiple hits, and then keep your uh, your pipes locked and loaded, and we ain't going anywhere. So shout out to Johnny Resnick, shout out to the Goo Goo Dolls, shout out to my boy Steve for uh, getting me over there. Shout out to New York City. You smell like pee, 
but you're a, you're a lot of fun to be around. How about that? How about that for an assessment of NYC? You smell like pee, but you're a lot of fun to be around. You're that guy that shows up to the party where people are like, oh, you got a cool outfit on, and you're like, oh, my God. You got some fun stories. You know, you travel. You got a lot of hobbies and passions. Always like a new gadget. But everyone's kind of like, Oof. what is he? Oh, he's leaving in a bit. Okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? That's New York City. Did a couple shows. That was fun. Did some stand-up. Um, doing shows in New York is a blast. People are very, very... Um, you get diverse crowds. It's like LA in that. You get that. You get people from all over, especially out here on Sunset Strip. You get crowds that are just, you know, sometimes heavy local, sometimes heavy out of town. And, uh, and that's why the challenge of, of connecting a room with people that are coming from all walks of life is exciting. Um, this weekend, by the way, I'm going to be at a new comedy club. Speaking of connecting at a, at a new spot, uh, the Olsen Run Comedy Club, run by my buddy Joe King, who uh, used to be out here in L.A., used to do a show with uh, Mark Saratella and I at the uh, Hollywood Improv, opened a club in Eugene, Oregon. I've never been to Eugene, Oregon. I don't know what happens there. I don't know what they smell like, but it's Oregon, so they're chill. There are probably some strip clubs and some dispensaries. My dad, I will pick him up in Salem. We will drive to Eugene. And do eight sold-out shows. Eight sold-out shows. Thank you so much, Eugene, Oregon. Olsen Run Comedy Club, Wednesday through Saturday. And then the fun continues on in Royal Oak, Michigan. Next weekend, April 4th through the 6th, the Comedy Castle. Shows are getting close to selling out. And man, let's push it over the top. If you know someone in Detroit or Lansing or Royal Oak where the shows are happening, tell them to come out. Got a brand new hour. We got some surprises. April 4th through the 6th, Comedy Castle, Royal Oak. And then, of course, Denver Downtown Comedy Works, April 18th through the 20th, 420 weekend. You're in Denver, the home of fucking weed and John Elway. Let's go. April 18th through the 20th, Comedy Store. Uh, coming up right after that, uh, of course. Uh, sorry, before that, April 2nd, Dr. Phil Live. But all these dates at AdamRayComedy.com. But I want to encourage you guys to go to uh, a site I'm using now for all my tickets, Punch Up Live. Uh, I'll put the link right there. Check that out. Go there. Enter your email. Be a part of my mailing list and uh, and get tickets for all my shows that way. As Adam Ray here. Hope you're enjoying the episode. Look, everyone wants to start their year off right. And for me, that means making sure I'm eating well and have enough energy to do everything that I want to do. Okay? But look, I'm not going to run out and, and, and butcher every day to get a fresh cut of quality meat. That's, that's not going to happen. I'm not, I'm not an idiot. That's why Good Chop is a lifesaver for me. Good Chop offers fully customizable boxes of high-quality meat and seafood that they deliver right to your door on your schedule, okay? The products are vacuum-sealed and frozen at peak freshness so you can stock your freezer and cook when you want. No one's telling you when or how. You do it whenever you want, and you get to choose from over 70 high-quality cuts. 100% grass-fed ribeyes, USDA prime filet mignon, free-range and organic chicken breast, pork tenderloin, and thick-cut bacon, just to name a few. They also offer sustainable and wild-caught seafood, salmon, Pacific cod, scallop shrimp, and more. Is your mouth watering, or do you got cat and mouth? Maybe a little bit of both, but look, if you want to cook up a great meal for yourself, for a loved one, for a hater, for a player, for your family, this is who you want to start messing with. Good Chop is the spot for you. I'm telling you, there's no other place I get my meat from and no other place I want to get my meat from unless it's a brothel in Amsterdam and that's what I'm looking for and I get a little too high and I'm like, hey, what do the fellas got to offer? And they go, oh, I didn't know you thought you came in here with your wife. And you go, yeah, but now I want to try the meats. Unless it's that, Good Chop is where you guys want to go and it won't cost you a fortune, okay? Good Chop's price per meal starts at just $3.74. $3.74. Good Chop especially prides itself on sourcing meat that comes with no antibiotics or added hormones. That's the big thing that people are into these days, getting the extra crap out of their meat. You want only the good stuff. So, because they're confident in the quality of their cuts, they offer a 100% money-back guarantee. Love Good Chop or get your money back. It's that easy, all right? So start messing with Good Chop right now. Get the meats and the treats that you want. Go to goodchop.com slash ALN120 and use promo code ALN120 to get 120 bucks off your first four boxes. That's ALN120 at goodchop.com slash ALN120 for $120 off Good chop and your boxes. Does that sound good? Does that taste good? Oh, yeah, your mouth's full. You can't answer. That's what she said. Enjoy the episode. So, look, there's uh, something that's kind of pissing me off. All right? 
girls that are juicing and posting about it nonstop. Da, 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 da. Welcome back to Nobody Gives a Shit. Hey, people probably don't care about some of the content I post or all of it, but man, what a time to be a human being where you post about your juice cleanse and then you post side-by-side -side pictures and there's no difference because you're already a super skinny girl that doesn't need to lose weight. Hey man, we all have body image issues. Hey man, good on you. Do what you're doing as long as you're not hurting anybody. But hey man, whew, flabbergasted, bewildered, bamboozled. This girl I know posted these side-by-side -side pictures of her juicing and losing like 12 pounds. And there's no difference. And she's so proud about it. I, I, I guess it just, when I see stuff like that, it makes me go, fuck, man. Like, good thing my nieces are only 14 and aren't old enough to maybe see stuff like that and maybe care yet. But, man, I also do feel bad for this girl because to be at that place in your life where you're like, I got to shed 12. Whew. I mean, everyone's trying to be the best version of themselves, but, but, I mean, you know, have a couple cookies. Also, you know, nobody's perfect, but dropping weight when there's no weight to drop. Dropping weight when there's no weight to drop. First of all, we need, fatties make the world go around, okay? Because they're the ones who invent the fun stuff. Okay, like fun dip. That was a fatty. Cheddar uh, cheese out of a can. Fatty. Okay, dipping cookies into, into ice cream. Fatty move. Root beer floats. Oh, you think a, a skinny person decided to put soda on their ice cream? That was a fat move. Crackers covered in fudge. Fatty move. Fruit pie. You're combining sugar and pie. Fruit that should go in... On your cereal, like a healthy choice dinner, is now inside of a pie, fatty move. Beer, you ever drink beer out of a fucking ice cream cone? <laughs> fatty move. So, my point is, we need big people. Skinny people are boring. <sighs> hey, if you're someone who posts earthquake, question mark, on Facebook... Delete your account because there probably wasn't an earthquake. And if there was, the comments below were always so unnecessary. Yeah, I think I felt that too. Cool. Do you guys want to talk about this over the phone? Public earthquake posts are annoying. That being said, yeah, Adam, hey, stop following that person. Well, it's tough when you pull up Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg's like, hey, you should look at this right now. And then you see a lot of shit you don't want. Also, Mark Zuckerberg is clearly tracking all of our thoughts and moves and choices and what we touch and what we say. So, you know, I was talking about how Celine Dion has stiff person syndrome, which is sad, by the way. Celine Dion is fucking freezing up from the outside, and it's very depressing. Um, and I hope she fucking gets help, because that sucks. But I was talking about that, and all of a sudden, Facebook fills up my shit with, like, you want to see Celine Dion's concert live in Brazil? And I was like, mm, yes. So you win this round, Facebook, but more often than not, you're chiming in with suggestions and things that I don't want to be a part of. But what am I going to do? Get off Facebook? <laughs> that I wouldn't know about people like Ruby Frank. Ruby Frank. Well, well, well. Welcome back to Psycho Moms. Welcome back to people that should be locked up for life. Ruby Frank is the psycho mom that ran this, this insane YouTube channel uh, where she basically... Uh, had her kids on... She tortured her kids. It was called Eight Passengers. Her and her kids, 2 million subscribers on YouTube, and her and her psycho uh, business partner would just torture the fuck out of these kids. Don't watch the videos. They're so depressing. Tiny kid's like, what are we doing today, Mom? She's like, we're gonna go, we're gonna go to a movie. And she's like, yay! What movie? She goes, how dare you ask what fucking movie it is? It shouldn't matter if it's Lion King 2 or the Die Hard 6, you bitch. Go to bed, we're not going. And the kid's like... <laughs> and then the kid comes up and hugs the mom and says, I'm sorry. It's so sad. Denies them food and water. 
I mean, so this mom, by the way, is going to jail for hopefully 75 years. I think it's four to 60. But the videos of her in the interrogation room are chilling. She's just like, you can talk to my lawyer. They're like, do you want to say anything about what you did? And she's like, I mean, just stone cold Steve Austin. Gives up nothing. She's psycho. I hope she rots in hell, and I hope she dies in jail. She was so bad to these kids. There's no, there's no, I'm sorry. You were like, you, how they, how they, how she got caught is I think the, tw uh, the 12 year old son was malnourished, hadn't eaten or drink, uh, drank anything in days, and went to the neighbors and was like, I, and then was just like, you know, Joe Biden eating an ice cream cone. I'm, I'm, I'm. And the neighbor was like, you all right? And he's like, my pizza. And he's like, what is it? My pizza. And so they've got the kids some pizza and then arrested the mom. I don't know if it was not in that order, but thank God Ruby Frank is our bitch of the week. You suck, Ruby Frank. God, just what a, I don't know. Torching kids is so, I got no patience for that. I think most people do. I'm not making some profound statement, but. I got no uh, no tolerance, no amount of empathy. There's no like, I screwed up, second chance. Fuck that, dude. You're mean to kids. And not just mean, you starved them. Now look, on the flip side, I would have loved if my mom was a little more harsh about the way that I was consuming snacks. You know, I got teased a lot. Most kids did. Fat Adam had nicknames like, you know, I think I've talked about this. Fat Adam Adam, penis and tits kid. Uh, Jello Jiggler was probably one of the most clever ones by Todd Giese. Um, but every kid got teased. Doesn't matter if you're fat, you know, it was, you know, fatty, fatty, ch you know, there was, there could be a, you know, a big boobs, you know, fat, fat tits, Jennifer, or, um, you know, uh, if a kid had a big nose, it was Pinocchio. If a kid was bald, it was Cancer Craig, you know, just kids were ruthless. No holding back. Just, <laughs> just shooting darts to your heart. Sounds like a Phil Collins song. They're shooting darts to your heart. Being a kid is tough. Cause you're trying to live. You're trying to do your best. There was a, a stripper in Australia uh, who got famous on OnlyFans for having two vaginas. I saw that and I was like, <laughs> click. She said one vagina is for work and one is for pleasure. Excuse me? I said one vagina is for work and the other vagina is for pleasure. Did you not understand what two vaginas means? No, I don't. But congrats, kudos. And which one does the kid come out of? The work or the pleasure vagina? And then do you tell him? And then if something's wrong with him or her, do you tell that kid? You know, I was trying to squeeze you out of my work pussy, but we had to... You took a detour and exited the freeway a little bit too early. Came out of my pleasure pussy. Kid's like, is that why I have a toe on my lip? Yeah, we're going to get you on Dr. Pimple Popper and pop that thing. Aren't you late for your work at the Costco? Oh, yeah. People with Costco, uh, people at Costco do have like, Target used to be the home of people with like growths and deformities that work there. You know, like you'll see a guy in a red polo and he's got like, you know, a giant like bump on it on the top of his forehead. And Target's just like, whatever, man. There's if he can tell people where the razors are and the plants, yeah, give him a six month trial because Target is the labyrinth of convenience stores. Nobody knows where anything is in that fucking store. You ever ask any here's my impression of anyone in Target who works there getting asked where something is. What's that? Uh, towels. Um, what color towels? What? Hey, uh, excuse me, man. Oh, what's up? Uh, do you know, um, peanut butter? Do you guys have peanut butter? Like peanut, like peanut butter and jelly? What? Hey, man, um, do you guys have, like, Spoons, like spoons to eat cereal with. Uh, like knives. No, no, I don't mean like knives. I mean like spoons, Terry. 
It's always some guy named Terry or Larry or Jerry. Any airy name, little suspect. Probably a ponytail, definitely some tattoos, potentially some STDs. How about that? But look, um, having an STD is nothing to uh, be bashful about. I have not had one, to my knowledge. But I think you know, I think you get signs. You get like itch, uh, itchy and scratchy. Um, you get... You know, probably Bernie Bernie Sanders going on somewhere. Um, but anyway, two vaginas, Australia. That's Australia, though. You got to go elsewhere to, to find the really cool stuff sexual, uh, sexually. Um, <laughs> my stepdad told me <laughs> our dog ate some of uh, my Viagra. I was like, cool. How'd you know my next question was, hey, can mom still get you hard organically? <laughs> Do you ever listen to like morning radio and go, uh, how are these guys still going? Like morning zoo, like I was listening to this show. I can't remember where it was, but they were like, it's our, we're going to give a, instead of a shout out, it was our shard out. Our shard out of the week. It's like 8 a.m. They're like, we're going to give a shard out. And they played a fucking shit, shit in your pants noise. Like a shard. Somebody's trying to fart this shit. That's what a shard is. If you're new to the show, if you're new to life, if you're nine years old and you don't know what a shard is, you've probably done it and you've been wondering, why did I try to fart and I pooped? That's a shard, Caleb. And it happens to the best of us. So this show is like, we're going to give our shard out of the week. And then they do a fucking shard noise. And I almost punched myself in the asshole. Um, but hey, man, we still need those morning drive radio shows because they're still... A lot of people that don't want to get like serious radio or Spotify or don't listen to podcasts and they only consume, um, you know, the, the morning drive by radio, uh, which is bananas because, man, these guys are just running out of shit to talk about. Trump might go to jail. Probably not. He's probably going to win. That's fucking nuts. Isn't that nuts? I sat next to uh, a woman on the train from DC, from New York to DC. She's a political consultant. I go, how's it going? She goes, oh, it's, uh, it's there's a lot going on right now. I go, you think Trump's gonna win? She goes, I think so. I go, oh fuck, if you said that, that's bad. But uh, we'll see what happens, man. DC, man, can you imagine working in DC right now, knowing that Biden could plop at any moment and Trump could just wild, dude. Just wild. Yeah, I don't know. If there's a if there's an option to get like a younger president, I think I'd really be pumped about voting. 80 and 81 is so old. Think of how many 80, 81 year olds there are in the world that you'd want to be president. Like, we can't get like I'd rather honestly have a fucking 19 or 20 year old. I mean, maybe it's because they're old and they can be coerced into like making weirdest choice, uh, weird choices. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You got to vote though. You got to try to make a change, like Michael Jackson said. I'm gonna make the change. Preacher Lawson, shout out to Preacher Lawson, one of the funniest dudes out there. Has a new special on YouTube. We'll put it up right there. I just saw a clip he posted the other day about uh, Michael Jackson and Mama Say, Mama Saw, Mama Akusa. So funny. It's, I think he, he basically does a joke about how what he sang instead, like what Michael was actually saying and how we're all fucking idiots because we just thought, we just took what he said and said that it was Mama Say, Mama Saw, Mama Akusa. Let's just fucking cut to the clip. You know what Michael Jackson's saying in that song? He's saying, I'm gonna say it one more time, I'm not gonna stop. I'm gonna say it one more time, I'm not gonna stop. That's what he's saying. Someone ruined it for me, I'm ruining it for everybody, all right? <laughs> I was mad too. I was like, what? But all of y'all for years, mama said, mom said, mama said. Those aren't words, bro. No one said that in life. Keep on playing, I'm gonna mock you, son. That's not a thing. People just believe anything they hear, man. Someone told me it was African. I was like, all right, mama said, mama said. I just went along with it. And I was like, look at me, I'm bilingual. Mama said, mama, I just went along with it. So shout out to Preacher Lawson, man. Go check out his special. One of the funniest out there. Um... My nephew, my nephew has a cell phone. I think I talked about this already, but 
his voicemail is uh, <laughs> is him running from the cops. <sighs> I can't talk. I can't talk. I gotta go. Oh shit. Oh fuck. To leave a voice message, press one. Nine years old. What does that mean when you're running from the cops as a joke at nine? Is that is that video game influence? He plays a lot of Fortnite. I don't know how much running from the cops there is in Fortnite. But holy shit, man, this kid. He's also a fucking superstar athlete. I now get it when when certain parents are like, my kid's going to go pro. And then you like toss him a football and it bounces off his face. You're like, yeah, I mean, he might, he might, uh, he might go pro in, um, you know, not sports. <laughs> the guy who can't come up with a comeback. Yeah, yeah, your son's going to be a professional not athlete. <laughs> um, yeah, he's he's uh, one of those kids that you go, oh, I hope all this athletic prowess stays on the court and doesn't uh, make its way into some other aggressive territory, meaning drugs, women, whatever that may be, because he is just fucking, dude, all talent. And right now, I don't even think he even has a work ethic. He just plays hard, and that's like serving him well. So you hope that that uh, you hope that that continues. Um, in the meantime, uh, Dr. Phil live shows are clicking and ticking, baby. We got two at the mothership coming up in Austin for the first time, which shout out to Austin. I, uh, ended my travels there at the, uh, can't even comedy festival. Caitlin and, uh, and Maxwell put on a, uh, first time festival at an outdoor venue. Myself, Ian Bag, uh, this kid, uncle laser in Austin, who's like Theo Vaughn's dad, a uh, real funny kid. And, uh, it was interesting, but it was fun. And uh, outdoor comedy is always dicey, but we made this work. And uh, it was in Cedar Park where the uh, HEB arena is, where we did the Kill Tony New Year shows. Fun to go to Austin. Was going to try to make it down to the mothership to see David Tell. Wish I did, but I had a 7 a.m. flight, so couldn't do it. But uh, I will be back in Austin for two Dr. Phil Live shows on April 21st. Those motherfuckers sold out in 20 minutes. Hopefully going to add some shows. Working on the guests as we speak. Cannot wait. Um... And, uh, and maybe some Kill Tony surprises coming soon as well. Um, but uh, but come out and see your boy on the road. So many dates. I mean, Pittsburgh. We just added Columbus, Madison, Chicago, Boston, Providence, New Jersey. Um, added San Jose. Added Utah. Added Vegas. Uh, Philly in October. Uh, Naples, Florida. We got Tacoma, Washington in June. We've got Cleveland, Ohio in June. We've got uh, San Francisco and San Diego in July, all at AdamRayComedy.com. But please, again, go to Punch Up Live, I think, slash Adam Ray. Uh, we'll put it up right here to get all the Adam Ray tour date information. And uh, and that's it for now. You guys were, uh, you guys were good. You guys were good. Maybe we should have a live audience. Four people. I wonder how that would change things. Just a four-person live audience. Got my boy Jesse on the other side of the window listening, but I can only hear him laugh once every 16 minutes, and that's not enough. Talking in silence is an art form. I respect the people that really have gotten good at just talking and hearing the sound of their own voice. I'm not a fan of it. I don't hate my voice. I don't love it. Um, whose voice would I want? Maybe Vince Vaughn's? Maybe a Ned Benning? Maybe Sam, uh, what's his name? Sam Rockwell? Michael Buble. Jamie Foxx has a cool voice. But I can't have a black guy voice. I could. But then I'd be my brother-in-law, Durte. He's got like white, black, like he's a, like blight. Blight or whack. If you combine white and black, that's what my brother-in-law Durte is. Like a cool white guy. Like the type of, the type of white guy that definitely, you know, has the respect of the brothers, right? Well, this was a weird uh, ending to the show. <laughs> but hey, maybe it's the uh, maybe it's the new beverage talking. You know, maybe I got that coffee withdrawal and that uh, that iced tea confidence. Well, look, uh, come out and see your boy on the road, Doctor Phil live. New show added June 26th at the Comedy Store. Come out and see that. Thanks for asking. Bagel, our new dog, is doing great. She's uh, acclimating to uh, to having a sister and being in our place. 
She's pissing and shitting everywhere, but hey, who doesn't? She's a dog. She did try to eat her own shit a few days ago, which was, uh, man, that was a bummer. When people say dogs are like kids, that is a pretty good indicator that they're not. What kid eats their own shit? <laughs> and don't take that as a suggestion to send me videos of your kids eating shit. I think even as a baby, you know better not to put poop in your mouth, right? Although my mom told me that, I told her when Bagel had jumped off uh, the, the couch and hit her head, my mom was like, you fell off the couch and you were fine. <laughs> I mean, babies are probably hitting their heads left and right, huh? Just fucking snap, crackle, pop, rice krispies into a headboard or... But we're resilient. I think God created the skull to be pretty, pretty uh, impenetrable. Um, all right. I'm going to try to not smoke weed for a month. I'll let you know how that goes. And I'm going to try to not drink uh, until Thursday. I'll let you know how that goes. Hope you guys had a great time. We'll see you next Tuesday for more about last night. And until then, wash your butt, hug your family, call your dad. We'll be right back. See you guys next time. <laughs>